Hello again, you're watching Everard Junction and today we're doing a slightly different video. Um, I'm going to do a few questions and answers and I'm going to talk about some of the ideas that I've got going on in my head for the new layout that should hopefully be uh, constructed over the coming months. So big thanks from me on the uh, previous video. Um, I've been overwhelmed by the amount of comments. Um, it seems I can't go more than 30 seconds at the moment without my phone bonging and telling me there's another comment. Um, I've tried to reply to a lot of them, but I'm, I've been swamped. I can't keep up with them. Um, so uh, if you haven't been replied to, I'm sorry, but I, I can't manage. I do have to still get on with the layout um, rather than sitting at my computer replying to you guys. Um, but uh, big thanks for all the comments. I do appreciate them. I do do my best to read them all, even if I don't reply. Um, it means a lot. Um, I can't believe that the layout has come this far. I never thought I would get in a magazine. I never thought that the layout would be so popular on YouTube and have so many followers. Um, it really does mean a lot. Um, so uh, I will do my best to make sure that the new layout is constructed, um, at least the early stages are constructed relatively quickly so we can resume normal service. Um, but uh, yeah, big thanks from me. Really appreciate all your comments and feedback um, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to provide you with videos for years to come. So first question, probably the most uh, common question that was asked, um, did it, was it painful taking it apart, were you upset? Um, honestly no, um, because I've had so many issues getting things to run around it reliably, um, that by the time you saw the video that I shot last week when I started taking it apart, I'd basically had enough of it, all my emotion had gone, I just wanted rid. Um, as bad as that sounds, um, I'd had enough of it, and I'd had, had it up to here with it, couldn't really be bothered with it anymore. Um, it didn't work. Um, and when a model railway doesn't work, it's, it's no fun. There's no point making anything for it. There's no point running anything because you just spend your life picking up derailed trains. Um, you generally just lose your enthusiasm for it. It really drags you down. So by the time you saw the video that I shot last week, I'd had enough of it. So if anything, pulling it apart was actually quite a liberating experience and actually um, renewed my excitement for building something new. Next question that was asked a lot was uh, what material am I going to build the new baseboards from? It's clear the MDF hasn't worked, what's the best material, what am I going to do? Um, the new baseboards are going to be built using plywood, they're going to be constructed using pretty decent quality plywood, whether it be birch, marine or whatever else I can find that is generally regarded as good exterior uh, moisture proof um, plywood. Um, MDF, uh, it does have a use, uh, you can use it to build a railway, there are railways out there that have been built on MDF boards for years and they are okay, um, but the key to making MDF work, as I've now learnt, is as much bracing as possible, as many legs as possible, and seal it with varnish, paint, whatever it may be, seal it from the moisture, otherwise it just sits there like a big sponge and just absorbs all of the nasties and then you end up with funny shapes, particularly if there aren't enough legs and there isn't enough support underneath. Now obviously you saw the layout lacked support in key areas, particularly the scenic area, because I had the bottom board and the top board and there was no room between the two, so if I put battening along the top here, there was even less room. So I had to make a conscious decision early on to see if I could get away with um, a relatively minimum level of bracing on the scenic side of things. And to be fair, back in 2009 when I did that, um, I was just building the layout for a bit of fun in the loft. I had no idea what it was going to turn into. Um, had I known what was going to happen over the coming years, I probably would have built the baseboards using more substantial materials and methods. Got a few people said, how's the car coming on? Well, it's getting there very, very slowly. Um, I've now sunk 265 man hours into that car. Um, I've done the front of it and I've done most of the driver's side. I'm currently repairing the rear wheel arches. Um, I'm hoping then to move on to the other side, continue the repairs underneath, do the other side of it, then do the back of it, and then there'll be a whole load more little bits and pieces to just chase up and go around. Um, it is taking a long time. I will try and do another video on it as soon as I can, but as I've mentioned in the last video I did on it, it is hard to film because I'm welding and grinding and cutting and drilling. Um, there's bits of metal flying all over the place. There's sparks, there's flame. Um, it is difficult to film. Um, I will try and get another video done. At the very least, I'll walk you around the car and show what I've done. Um, but it is progressing. Um, I hope to have the metal work mostly finished by the end of this year. If you want to keep tabs on how I'm getting on with the car, I have a forum thread running for it where I post pictures on a regular basis, usually every one or two weeks, of things that I've done and how I'm getting on with it. Um, there's a link in this video description, so if you're curious on the restoration process of the car and what I've been up to, take a look at that. All your questions should hopefully be answered in there. 
Uh, where we are with the railway at the moment is um, I have dismantled all of the top boards, the scenic boards, they are off the layout, they are detached, they are gone. Um, that includes the yard that I built in the middle. Some of you had questions about that. Are you going to keep the yard? Are you going to get rid of it? Um, although the yard, there wasn't really anything wrong with it, um, I just feel better starting afresh. Um, I've salvaged as much as I can off it. Um, the board has gone in the pile of the other boards that will be going to the tip, and uh, I will uh, be building another yard on the new layout, most likely, um, that will utilise the big carriage shed. Um, the carriage shed that I spent all that time on building is by no means going away. Um, that will feature on the new layout. It will have a place and a purpose. So at the moment the uh, top boards have been removed, the helixes have been removed, lots of track has been taken up and I'm now down to the uh, the base layer and the uh, the track that's under there, the fiddle yards, etc. Um, what's taken most of the time, to be honest, is actually boxing up all of the rolling stock. Um, it takes ages. Uh, I kept all of the original boxes and I've been able to box pretty much everything back up again. Um, but it takes a long time because obviously you know, you've got to open the box, you've got to pull out the plastic, you've then got to dust the model off, you've got to put it in the plastic, then got to put the plastic back around it, then you put it back in the box, seal the box up, a process that takes, you know, two minutes. Um, but then you, you've got to do it to, you know, 80 pieces of rolling stock, so it takes a long time. Um, that is now completed and I'm now able to rip the rest of the layout apart, so uh, we are progressing. Um, hopefully I'll have the layout pretty much gone um, by the end of next week. Um, and then that will allow me to get up there and start doing the insulation, start making some improvements to the room, um, start looking at things like controlling the heat if I can and controlling the humidity. Um, and then once I'm happy that the room is ready to accept a new railway, then I will then begin constructing the new layout. Somebody asked me would I base the new layout on a real, a real place, you know, actually do a proper two-scale representation of a real location. Um, as much as I would like to do that, um, the fact is it's a square room and a railway is a straight line. Um, I don't have the room to do it. Um, one of the principal constraints I have is the hatch to get into the attic is only two feet across. It's only two feet wide. Um, there's no way of making it bigger because either side of it is a brick wall because it's in a corridor. So the layout boards and baseboard construction can only be two foot wide because otherwise I can't get it up there and the same token I can't get it out either. Um, so the new layout will have to be two foot wide as was the old one. Um, I will probably try and make some bits a bit wider by perhaps adding detachable boards or something. I've got a few ideas cooking in my head. Um, but uh, I will not model a real place. It will once again be a fictitious location but I will do my best to make it as realistic as possible as I did with the previous layout. Another well, question I've been asked is, uh, would I make the switch to Code 75 Rail? It's something that I've mentioned before. Um, yes, it is something I've been mentioned before. Um, I have done my best to save as much track on the existing layout as possible, purely because I'm not sure what path things are going to take, so I'm going to keep hold of it. Um, but uh, I certainly am thinking hard about converting to Code 75. Um, it just looks that a little bit more realistic. Um, if, if anything, actually, when you compare them side by side, there's quite a big difference. Um, certainly if you go to a model railway exhibition and you look at a layout that is code 100 and then you literally just take a few steps up to the next railway and you look at that one and it's code 75, you will spot the difference straight away. Um, the track does look better. Um, it's still not 100% accurate, um, but it's a more convincing um, looking profile um, for the track. So yes, it's something I'm considering and I'm also thinking about things like concrete sleeper track as well. Um, so uh, there may be a change in the type of track I use. Um, I may be able to keep the, uh, the fiddle yard code 100, that would use up a lot of my old track and then perhaps have the scenic area of the layout um, in code 75. Um, that would that could uh, could work quite well actually. So yeah, something along those lines may happen. A few people have said, will it still be called Everard Junction? Um, obviously it will be. The, the channel is known as Everard Junction. Um, even I'm known as Mr. Everard Junction. I've been called Mr. Junction, uh, Mr. Everard, and various interpretations of spelling both of those words. Um, the, uh, the layout will still be called Everard Junction. I've got no intention of changing its name. Um, Everard Junction is actually named after my grandfather. Um, his middle name was Everard and he was very much into the models and the trains and he's probably the guy that got me into the hobby um, at such an early age. Um, for as long as I can remember I've been obsessed with anything model that moves. Um, so I named the layout after him. Um, he passed away in 2005 so he never saw Everard Junction be created so I thought it fitting to name the layout after him. Um, and as a result of that, I don't want to change its name, it will still be called Everard Junction. 
Uh, so let's, uh, let's talk about some of the ideas that I've got going on, lots of ideas going on in my head. Um, you have to be realistic with the space you have, you cannot implement them all, but it's worth keeping them all in mind um, and keeping an open mind so that you can build something creative. Um, so lots of ideas going on. What I'm about to tell you, some of it won't get implemented, some of it will. It will be a case of what works, what doesn't, what fits, what doesn't. Um, I'm going to have to find a balance, as you do with any layout. Uh, some of the uh, parts of the old layout that I enjoyed um, will make a return, obviously in a revised format because it's all been taken down, but the ideas that I had with those scenic areas will make an appearance on the new layout and hopefully bring that symmetry between the old layout and what will be the new layout. There should be a little bit of symmetry between the two. Um, they will be radically different because I've got completely different ideas about how I want to do this layout, uh, but there are certain areas that I would like to try and carry over, if I can, to the new layout. Uh, one of the areas I really enjoyed looking at was the town scene. Um, I liked the terraced houses, I liked the urban feel of the place, the busyness, um, the way it captured that sort of 80s feel, with, especially with all the road vehicles. Um, that was a nice area, I thought that came out well, I enjoyed that. Um, so those terraced houses will hopefully be coming back to the new layout, and again it will be a completely different format, they'll be arranged completely differently, but the idea will remain the same, I'd like a built up area of terraced houses. Another area I thought worked well was the throat into the station where you looked across the point work from that um, small uh, uh, area of standing where I kept some of the diesel locomotives. Um, I thought that area worked well. Um, it was great to look out across it as trains entered or left the station. Um, so the new layout will feature a large station much like the old one did um, and it will have a, a throat with a complex series of point work and it will be hopefully a good place to sit and watch trains enter and exit the station. Another area I really liked was the uh, canal scene tied onto the allotments. Um, I thought the allotments was a novel idea, it's not something you see too often on model railways, um, so they may make an appearance if I can get room uh, for, to do it. Uh, another thing I thought was good was uh, the canal scene itself, I enjoyed building it. Um, it didn't actually take too long to build, it was a relatively quick job, but I enjoyed the processes, um, the new materials I experimented with, the realistic water and so forth. Um, I enjoyed that, I thought it came out well and it looked good, and for me what was important was it uh, had that area of uh, lowered terrain. It was a, an area on the layout where the terrain dropped down and uh, you had a different way of looking at things, um, because you were then sat lower down looking up to the lines, which I thought was uh, quite a nice effect. Um, so water will certainly make an appearance on the new layout if I can squeeze it in somewhere and uh, I hope to uh, have much more variation in the terrain in terms of its heights, where it goes and how it, how it works, much more hills and drops and raises and cuttings and embankments and all that kind of stuff. To do that I'll be building the baseboards using the open frame or L girder technique which is basically where you have the baseboard um, constructed like a big egg box. Um, it creates an extremely rigid and warp free structure. Um, then what you do on top of that is you then place your track bed um, on, a, on a slither of wood so the wood is only as wide as whatever you want the track to be um, and you raise that above that bottom layer of the baseboard so effectively the track is let's say five six inches uh, above the height of the bottom of the baseboard um, then what you can do is you can come along and you can raise the terrain to meet the uh, the, the, the lines and even go beyond it to create cuttings so there's much more opportunity for variations um, in terrain and how the terrain behaves in terms of the, uh, the layout. Um, something I thought the old layout had a bit of was um, it looked in certain places like the terrain had been carved to facilitate the railway. Um, what I always have wanted to try and do was make it look like the railway was put through the terrain not the other way around. I don't like it where you've just got this big load of flat space with a load of track on it because it just looks like the flat space was made for the track. I want it to look like the landscape was cut to then have the track run through it. It wants to look like a place that has a railway in it, not just look like a railway that happens to have a place sort of squeezed around the edges of the railway. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about the control for the layout. Um, some of you have asked me in the comments, you know, what am I going to do? Am I going to do computer control? Am I not going to do anything? Am I just going to leave it as it is? Um, what's the plan with regards to that? Um, there's lots of ideas floating around at the moment. Um, in a nutshell, I want to make the control a lot more advanced and interesting um, versus what I have at the moment. What I have at the moment is a lens um, set. It's just the uh, the LH100 uh, 
handset with the LZV100 uh, command station, and that's all I have. Um, there are all kinds of modules, accessory decoders, um, block detection, all kinds of stuff that can be plugged into that module. Um, one of the reasons I never did it was because going back to the problems with the old layout I had very little room between the two baseboards. I had a top and a bottom and very little room in between. It was difficult to do any decent wiring or wire up anything particularly complex due to the clearance that I had underneath for things like trains and fiddle yards and getting your hand into solvent derailment for example. Um, with the new layout being on a single level I'll be able to go to town so to speak on the electrics. So I'll be able to get a bit more advanced um, and have some cool stuff going on. So I've been looking at various systems. Um, one idea is to just expand my lens um, as I already have a lens unit and I am very happy with it. Um, that would allow me to do block signalling um, which would work quite well. Um, I've been looking into the lens BM, uh, the BM2 and BM3 modules to do block signalling. Um, again, the old layout, um, it, was it was never built with signalling in mind. I put the track down and then later I thought, hmm, it would be nice to put some signals on. So I want to design this one from the ground up to actually look like the infrastructure is working properly in relation to where the track goes. So uh, I'll do my best with that, that's going to be a learning curve certainly. Um, but uh, yeah, block detection, trains automatically being able to stop at signals. Um, a problem I had with the old layout was if you had two trains on one track and one was faster than the other, you had to really keep an eye on it to make sure there wasn't an accident. Um, if the new layout was able to take care of that automatically for me, that would be great. It would also look more realistic. Um, I've also been looking at computer control, looked at things like Hornby Railmaster, um, stuff like that. Um, what I'm generally coming back with is no matter what system I look at, it has some sort of disadvantage somewhere. That there's something that can't be done, but you can do that. Um, and then you look at something else where you can do the thing that couldn't be done, but as a result, the other thing that you could do, now you can't do. So I may end up having a hybrid system where I implement different um, pieces to try and get the overall control that I want for the layout. I still want to be able to control the, the layout myself. I don't want to just hit a button and it just go away and, and do it all for me. I want to still be involved in the process of driving the trains, but some automation to help me out, stopping at signals automatically, um, you know, signals turning to red and stopping trains when points are thrown, things like that. So um, I'm doing a lot of research into it at the moment and uh, no doubt you will see some videos on that as the new layout progresses. I've been having a think about the uh, station area for the new layout. Um, I want to have a much nicer station building. Um, I never thought the old station building was much to look at. It was a bit small. Um, I was limited with space. Um, wasn't particularly well planned out. Again, the layout, although looking very large, it was only two foot wide, so there were problems um, with trying to squeeze too many things in. Um, a mistake I feel I made in a few places. I just crammed a bit too much in. Um, but anyway, the new station, um, I'd like the station building to be a lot more interesting to look at, really be a focal signature place for the layout, a real place where you can look at it and you go, that's Everard Junction. Um, so I've been looking at uh, ideas, um, Google Earth is a great place because you can just move around and look at uh, stations and different ideas. Um, and I think the sort of thing I'm going to go for um, goes back to my hometown, um, which is a fantastic place, um, a city of culture, beauty, tourism, it's Watford. And uh, in the middle of Watford, there is this horrible monstrosity of an office building over Watford Junction. Um, the building um, was built in, I think, in about 1986. Um, and it's just so 80s. It's got a great feel about it. It's got that real period feel. It looks really dated now. It's, you know, for a start, it's brown. Um, but when you look at it, it's just something about it just uh, has always caught my attention just the way it looks the way it portrays that sort of 80s era that it came from um, I think the layout would look really good with a building that either looked very similar or was even perhaps a complete replica of it um, so that's certainly something I'd like to do um, it's a cool looking building and I think it would uh, really add a piece to the layout um, it's not a pretty building, um, it looks pretty terrible, um, but there's just a certain feel about it it's, it's like when you look at something and you go that's terrible but then you think you stop and think about it and you go, yeah, but it's so terrible, I actually like it. It's got a certain coolness about it. So certainly want to do a lot more with the station. Um, platforms for the station, I'll be making new ones. Um, they'll be scratch built. There'll be videos on how to do it. 
Uh, something else I've already touched on, obviously, is I want to find a home for my big carriage shed that I built. Um, whether or not I can fit it all in, I'm not sure. I may have to uh, have a little bit lopped off it because it is very long. Um, but if I can fit it in in its entirety, then even better. Um, it will certainly make an appearance on the layout, and there will be videos on finishing it. I haven't even finished it yet. It's still very much the bare bones. It needs a lot more details added to it. Um, but uh, yes, that has not been chucked. That will certainly make an appearance on the new layout. Something else I'd quite like to do is separate freight and passenger workings. Um, if I've got the space, I think it would work really well. I'd like to be able to have some freight lines and passenger lines separate to each other. Um, it will allow me to run the freight trains at a slow prototypical speed, but then I can run the passenger trains a lot quicker. It will certainly make for some interesting viewing. Um, it will also allow me to experiment with different weathering techniques. We can have different weathering for the passenger um, and different weathering for the freight, and maybe even a different ballast between the two. Um, I think that would look quite good if I can get the space to do it. Um, I live quite close to the Midland Main Line and uh, on one particular section uh, there is uh, an area where you have two freight lines or secondary lines. Um, the only thing I've ever seen run on them is freight um, and then you have the, uh, the passenger lines, the much faster lines, uh, which have the uh, East Midlands um, trains running up and down it. Um, so that would be something quite good to try and sort of create um, a sort of hint to um, whether or not I can get it to fit in the space, I don't know. Um, but it would be something I'd be quite interested in doing. Uh, something else I'm thinking about doing is implementing third rail after all the layout is set during the Network South East period of British Rail um, and it is likely that it wouldn't have been very far from an area of third rail electrification um, with uh, electric multiple units. Um, I've actually already bought a electric multiple unit. Um, I bought it uh, about uh, a month ago when I was making some plans for the new layout. Um, so almost certainly there will be an element of third rail on the new layout. Another thing I'd really like to do, um, and again, uh, I hope I can squeeze it in and make it work. Um, I've known about this for a long time and it's always been something that's interested me, um, something I've wanted to do, and that is to implement um, the Fowler car system or something similar to the Fowler car system. There is more than one system out there, um, but the most well-known system is the Fowler car system. Um, it's not uh, seen on too many British layouts, certainly I've not seen it a great deal. Um, some continental layouts I see it a little more, but it, even though it's been around a while it tends not to get implemented too often. Um, but uh, I'd really like to be able to do it. I think uh, moving road vehicles really add something to the layout, give it that extra layer of realism, that extra sort of missing link, if you like, of movement. Um, you know, the amount of times you look out across um, a model railway and you see the trains running up and down and there's a busy road in front of you in the foreground and all the cars on it are stationary. Um, it still looks great, but wouldn't it be great if those cars could move? So certainly something I'm looking into, I've been doing a fair bit of research into it. Um, how much I end up doing, you know, what sort of scale it's end up on, will it go around the whole layout or will it only be a small area, I don't know. Um, but it's certainly be something I'd like to do. I think it uh, adds a real extra layer of realism to the layout. Um, and as I say, there is more than the one system, it's not just the Fowler car system. Um, the Fowler car system does have its disadvantages as far as I'm concerned um, and there's two basic principal disadvantages for me. Number one, everything looks like it's moving too quickly because it's all self-motorised and the motors just can't go slowly enough. Um, number two is that um, it is uh, rather expensive. Um, I mean, you're looking at, uh, you know, let's say, let's say a bus for the Fowler car system that works and has lights is £80, let's say. Um, that's just one bus. What if you wanted two trucks and a van and maybe even another bus? It's a serious investment you're looking at. Um, so I am looking at some other systems that move vehicles uh, without motorising them. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, I'm excited to try and implement it. Um, I hope it works. I hope I can pull it off. I think it would be a nice signature piece for the layout. Uh, touched briefly already on water. I would like to implement water again on the layout. I thought the canal looked really good. Um, I'd like to do this perhaps bigger, better than what I did before. Whether or not it's a canal or maybe a river or who knows, you know, whether it's straight, whether it's on a curve. Um, you know, there's, there's multiple ways of doing it and different ideas I've got going on in my head. Um, but yeah, I would certainly like an area of water and then as a result of that, a bigger, more impressive bridge um, for the railway to go over said water. Um, there's a bridge not too far from where I live. It's not particularly easy to see, um, but uh, I quite like the design of it. It's a very traditional uh, sort of style um, and 
in a way, a lot of people just look straight past them. They look really dull. Um, but I find a certain beauty in the mundane aspects of, uh, of life and what people just take for granted. Um, and it's quite, when you actually start looking at it, it's quite an interesting bridge. Um, so uh, I would like to implement something like that. Again, space, we'll have to see if it'll fit. I can't do all of these ideas at the same time. Um, but yeah, that would be something I'd be interested in doing. So we're looking at uh, possible computer control, we're looking at the fact of car system, we're looking at a really big office type station building with a big block of monstrosity over the top of it. Um, we're looking at uh, rivers or canals, we're looking at implementing the big carriage shed, we're looking at having potentially one more running line than we have at the moment going up to four, we're looking at separating them, having freight on one side, passenger on the other, um, we're looking at block signalling, um, I'll be of course motorising all of the points, um, there will be loads of signals, um, yeah, lots of ideas going on. Um, I will not be able to do everything but I'd like to try and do as much as possible. Um, and I want to try and keep the layout simple to a certain extent in terms of the track, where it goes, what's the route, what's going on here. Um, something I thought Everard Junction had a problem with was there was too much track, um, in particular sidings. There were too many sidings um, here, there and everywhere. Um, one of my favourite places on Everard Junction was uh, the uh, long expanse of countryside that went into the tunnel on the uh, longest part of the layout. And that area, despite being the most interesting to watch, the most pleasurable to operate and to look down and to photograph and to film, it only had three pieces of track on it. It didn't have anything else, and it didn't need anything else, and I thought it worked very well. It's a good example of um, how overdoing track can actually detract from the overall um, scene that you're trying to create. It can make things look a bit too busy. So, uh, again, I want lots going on, but I don't want to overdo it. I don't want the thing to look like there's just a massive fiddle yard. It needs to look like a natural, real place. Uh, something else I'd like to implement is perhaps uh, a large store. Um, so everybody likes to model a newsagents or a corner shop or something, um, but I've been thinking about perhaps a large, you know, I say a supermarket with a big car park, or perhaps a DIY shop or an electronics shop or something like that. Um, that would help to create the 80s feel that I'm going for. Um, if I was to do a DIY shop, which is the idea I'm leaning towards most of all at the moment, um, I would create a Texas home care. Um, Texas Home Care were your, your your traditional budget DIY shop. They were sort of like one rung below sort of home base and B and Q. Um, I don't know what happened to them in the end. They either got bought or went bust, but they haven't been around for many years. Um, but in the 80s, Texas Home Care that was something you saw quite regularly on an interchange retail park. Yeah, using the same ideas, um, I could easily create you know a, a Sainsbury's or a, a Safeway or a Summerfields or something like that perhaps. Um, and uh, with in terms of electronic shop, um, you could do something like Tempo. Um, they went bust in 2002, so again, a good um, period piece. You know, they were they were about in the 80s and the 90s. Quite a well-known electronic shop, uh, where incidentally my first TV I think came from there. Um, so that's one of the ideas. But certainly some sort of large um, retail outlet of some description I think would be quite interesting to get on the layout. So there you are, uh, there's a few questions hopefully answered. Um, as I said earlier, um, there's too many comments going on in the previous video for me to be able to get through them all and, res and reply to all of your questions and queries. Um, I do do my best to read all the comments, but there's so many comments on that last video now, I, I simply can't reply to all of them. Um, so hopefully this has answered some of your questions. Um, as you've heard, I've got plenty of ideas cooking for the layout. I'm excited about getting started. Um, yes, I've got some stuff to wade through in order to get there. I've got to finish getting rid of the old layout. I've got to prepare the room for a new layout. Um, and I will be making damn sure that I am preparing that room properly and not building the layout until I am happy. Um, so there is going to be some time, obviously, between the uh, first of the uh, layout videos starting for the new layout. Um, but I have a couple of rolling stock ideas and little things that I can do on the workbench in the meantime. Um, so that will hopefully uh, keep the videos up a little bit. Um, but you are going to have to bear with, obviously, because this is a big project um, that I'm undertaking and I am basically starting from scratch. So, thanks again. If you came this far and you're still here, thanks a lot for watching the video. It does mean a lot to me. Um, I will hopefully be back relatively soon with another video. Um, what it'll be about, I don't know. I'm not sure what course things are going to take at the moment, but uh, I'm excited to get going with the new layout, so uh, there will certainly be more to come.